This practical exercise corresponds to the use of pairwise sequence comparison methods. Pairwise sequence alignment is used to identify regions of similarity that may indicate functional, structural, or evolutionary relationship between two biological sequences. Pairwise sequence alignment methods are used to find the best matching local or global alignment of two query sequences. In this exercise, we are going to construct pairwise sequence alignment using the web server of the European Bioinformatics Institute. The European Bioinformatics Institute is an academic research facility located on the Wellcome Trust Genome Campus in UK. It is part of the European Molecular Biology Laboratory and offers a fair amount of online bioinformatic tools for the analysis of genes and protein sequences. On the pairwise sequence alignment page, there are a variety of options. You can choose between global and local alignment, each of them contains several different algorithms. In this exercise, we, we will use the netherman wunsch algorithm for global alignment of two sequences and the smith waterman algorithm for the local alignment of two sequences. Let's start doing a global alignment of two proteins. The first step for conducting an alignment is to enter the protein sequences. The second step is set the pairwise alignment options. These options include the selection of the substitution matrix from several options, the selection of a gap open and gap extension penalties, and the possibility of select an output format for the alignment. We will maintain these default options in the alignment. The last step is submit the job. The output of the alignment has three parts. The first part contains information about the program and the algorithm. You can see which program was used, when the job was done, and how to perform the job using command line on your computer. The second part is about the alignment. It contains options used as alignment param parameters, the sequences used as input, and the most important part, it contains the result summary. Which says about the length of the alignment, the identity of residues between the two sequences, the similarity between residues, the number of gaps, and the total score of the alignment. 
The third part of the result is the alignment itself. It is composed of three lines. The first and the third represent the two sequences aligned. The second line represents the similarity between them. Looking at this result, we clearly see that these two proteins are related. They share a high percentage of identity or similarity of residues, and when we look at the alignment, it is a very strong correspondence in all the regions of the proteins. Now, we're going to change one of these two sequences by other sequence more distantly related. In, the ca in this case, the comparison that we conduct was between two homologous in different species, human and rat, of the beta-2 adrenergic receptor. Now we are going to substitute this receptor for a member of the same family but more distantly related. That is the case of the dopamine receptor of humans. And submit the alignment. These are the results. As we can see, when we compare two distantly related sequences, we can observe that values for identity, similarity, and the score of the alignment is decrease. Also, there is an aument in the number of gaps in the alignment that evidences the large dis evolutive distance between the two sequences. With this simple example of an alignment calculation between different sequences, we can make assumptions of the relationship between these three sequences. Now, let's go to compare two nucleotide sequences. For doing that, we have to go to the needle in nucleotide options. In this case, the matrix, the program detect that these are nucleotide sequence and the matrix is changed according to the matrix for the comparison between nucleotides. We're going to submit this job. Here is the result of our alignment and here is the alignment. In this example, we observe that there is a region when the sequence aligns perfectly, but one sequence is larger than the other. 
This actually corresponds to a comparison of the coding region of the calmodulin gene with a partial fragment of the gene. So, in this sense, the global alignment methodology could help to localize a certain fragment of a protein of DNA or a DNA sequence in the more complete information about that sequence. If we conduct this alignment instead of global in, uh, with a local method, what we will observe? The local algorithm on only delivers the region of the coincidence. So, if you see, there is 100% of identity and similarity, and a very high score. The local alignment only takes into account the regions that are coincident between the two sequences. Let's see another example in protein sequences using global alignment. Here we have two transcription regulators from E. coli and from bacillus subtilis that maintain a very distant evolutive relation and we want to determine where it is located. So we submit the alignment of the two sequences And here we have the results. A very low value of identity and similarity, very low value of scores, and a lot of gaps in the two sequences. So it seems that the, these sequences are separated by the middle, but something's have happened here. Let's go to try to clarify this doing a local alignment of the two sequences. Based on this result, it's very difficult to establish a, 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 a relation between the sequences because we are below the twilight zone of sequence similarity. So, we have to be very careful to, in, in order to make an statement about the evolution or the relationship between these two sequences with these low values of identity. So, let's go to explore on a local basis these two sequences.
Here we have the result of the local alignment. As you can see in the region of coincidence of the two sequences by the local alignment uh, methodology, we, we could see that there is an improve in the identity and similarity between the two sequences and also in the score of the alignment. In this case, the local alignment rescue the conserved region between the two sequences because the method search for region of local similarity and need not to include the entire length of the sequences. It is important to, to take this into account. Global sequence alignment algorithms align sequences over the entire length, so we need to think about which type of alignment makes sense for our sequences. In this case, it seems that the similarity is concentrated in one part of the two sequences that could be a domain. In fact, in this case, it's a domain that is shared by these two sequences. These two sequences are uh, transcription factor regulators that binds to the, to the DNA and this is the region involved in the binding of the DNA. Well, basically, this is the tool for aligning sequences, for the pairwise allies of sequences. We can use other algorithms that are as good as, as that we describe in the in the in the lessons, but these are the most useful, used and, and classic methods for. Uh, the comparison of uh, uh, protein and nucleic acid sequences. Thank you.